morning. How about if we sing one favorite before we start our service this morning? Does anybody have a favorite out of the faith we sing? A favorite out of here? Anybody? His Eyes on the Sparrow is 2146, I think. Is that right? 2146. His Eyes on the Sparrow. Let's sing the whole thing. Sing it happy.
give God a hand working through Elizabeth. <laughs> Makes you want to stand up and just kind of sway back and forth. <laughs> Thank you. We have some beautiful music comes through our uh, talented musicians here. I have a couple of things I want to bring up to you during our announcement time. Uh, just to let you know, those of you who gave snacks and such for our Friday night, fifth quarter, I'd say we had about 50 plus kids there, all told, at any one, it was a kind of a come and go thing, but it was wonderful to have all those kids come in, and we hope that it will continue that way. We have another one Friday night, so I'll probably be calling you for a few more cookies. We had some sweet things and some salty things, and it was just really great. Um, I have a sign up. There's another thing that we do for our youth. Our youth will be starting to meet soon Friday evening or Saturday. Sun <laughs> Let's get the day right. Sunday evenings, and we provide them with <clears throat> what we call chopper. That's food. And I'll, I'll let you read the explanation. I had to ask what, what chopper was. You, you might be able to gather what it is, but we have a sign up for that. I'll start it over on this side time, uh, this time, and make sure those of you who get it at the back, pass it up to the back or the front of the next section. You can sign up uh, if you can bring a covered dish or something for us uh, to eat. want to remind you to... Fill out your attendance card. It's the opportunity for you to communicate with us, with me, to let us know if you have needs or prayer concerns. And fold it in half and put it in the offering plate as it passes by. We have been uh, concerned for Marie McNeil who had surgery on her ankle. Her daughter Marie sent along an update to share. Mom is experiencing some pain after her surgery, but overall is doing well. We don't know yet how long she will be in here, but she will most likely be discharged to a rehab or extended care facility until her, her first post-operative appointment in approximately 10 days. So she'll be in rehab about 10 days. At that time, she should get a hard cast put on and probably be able to come home. So 10 days, but it will go fast, I'm sure, because she's going to uh, be itching to come home. And she says she would appreciate continued prayers for healing. So let's continue to keep uh, Sylvia in our prayers. Are there other announcements, joys, or concerns that you'd like to lift up this morning? I have an... Oh, sorry. Do you want me to go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, well, you know, as yesterday, we were out there with the fire department. They were filling the boot for a muscular dystrophy. And this year, they raised $1,581, I think, Marie told me. And so, you know what? The fire department is an awesome, awesome um, thing that we have in our community, and it's volunteer. And they were out there, I mean, like four or five different areas. And nobody got by Marie, but I think one person. But he almost hit him, so that was okay. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think anybody else got by Murray because he made them give him even a penny. If they had even any pennies, they were going to put him in the boot. So anyway, I just love my time with them when we're out there. And it's a blessing to have all such great um, guys on the fire department. So. Yeah. Thank you, Deb. Are there others? Patrick. The Mosaic building just recently got finished. I went and checked it this morning. There's definitely some good updates to it. So the high school Sunday school class will start next Sunday. And also another prayer concern. Many of you know Tate Reed was diagnosed this, uh, last week with leukemia. Um, he will be going under his sec undergoing his second chemo treatment today, sometime this morning, this afternoon. Please keep the family in your prayers. Uh, Tate, Amy, Eric, JC, and Leah. And also, if you want to follow some announcements from them and just how things are going, um, like the Facebook page, Team Tate. Thank you. Keith had something in the back there. Keep waving your hand, Keith. We'll get to you. Uh, the lady of the house has a birthday, Thursday the 10th. That's Lou. 
That's right. And yeah. I'm not telling her age, but she's not using paper money. <laughs> Judy. I will be having a CT scan on Wednesday. Then I go and see Dr. Geitz on Thursday. I would appreciate continued prayers for a good report yes. with my CT scan. Thank you. You will definitely be in our prayers. Jenny. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone within my church family and in Ellsworth for all the prayers for my son. Um, I had prayers in Washington State, in Arizona, in Colorado, in Kansas, and probably in Colorado, and many more. I'd also like to say I'd like continued prayers for his recovery, and um, a blessing is a family that you may or may not be familiar with, but they're my neighbors, and they're my family in this community. And um, their support and prayers meant the world to me. He's improving amazingly well. Um, for that, I'm grateful for God's mercy and all the prayers. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Are there others? I would like to announce that uh, Honor and Glory Fellowship will be eating out at the Steakhouse this coming Thursday. Uh, at 6 p.m. and all ladies are invited to attend. Yes. Okay, you'll have a good steak up there, I know. Sure. <laughs> Ro well, I'm sitting here. Today is our 57th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> Faith. Hold on a second. Let's get her microphone on. Okay. Please pray for my dad, I mean, my grandpa, because he ha he's going to get surgery because he has cancer. Oh, my. We will pray for him. Thank you, Faith. Also, in Sunday school, we have been diving into Moses this summer. And to celebrate the end of summer and the end of that unit, we are going to have a swimming party at our, our house at 402 Bradley, and we're inviting everybody to come tomorrow afternoon from 2 to 5. So please come and swim with us or relax by the pool. So 2 to 5, we're going to have um, hot dogs and s'mores. So please come. Thank you to you guys for doing that for our kid, our kids. Is there another? Sorry, sorry, I forgot okay, Deb an important thing. Sorry. Uh, my sister's here from Oklahoma. I should have been said yay. So anyway, sorry about that. Welcome. <laughs> and I've got one. We have uh, the trustees are planning our family. I'm calling it the family fall cleanup because this is our family and this is our home and yes. we all get to help clean up, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have a sign-up sheet, and it'll be September 19th from 8 a.m. to noon. And there are four teams. One is outside, one is inside, one is maintenance, and one is food slash team motivation. Oh, that's a motivator, isn't it? So uh, I'm going to start the clipboard over here. Okay. Please yeah. sign up. Make sure you pass that around. Other joys or concerns or announcements? Jan. Just a quick joy. Our kid from uh, North Carolina's home for the weekend. He had a little bit of leave time, and his girlfriend Aubrey's here too. So we're just enjoying this weekend a lot. Anybody else? Well, let's take a few minutes, not too long, <laughs> to greet one another in the name of Christ.
beautiful music, Elizabeth. Got some blue notes in there. <laughs> The Lord be with you. Please join me in the call to worship. Rejoice, people of God. Celebrate the life within you and Christ's presence among you. Rejoice, people of God. Bow your heads before the one who is our creator and our redeemer. Please join me in prayer. God of tenderness, we thank you. Let's join together in hymn 152, I Sing the Almighty Power of God. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come up for the children's time with Darcy. <laughs> oh. Good morning. How is everybody today? Good. Good. Do we have everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guess what? 
back to school time, right? Has everybody started school? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we packed up our supplies and we got ready and packed our book bags full of stuff to get ready for school, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, today I brought with me something that's really important in school, right? What is this? Uh, crowns. Look at all the crowns. I have a lot of them, and they're different sizes, right? <laughs> Remy, look, at, look. See all my different sizes of crowns, and they're all different colors. And it says some are sharp, and some are not as sharp. They're, uh, they're kind of dull. Um, some of them have strange sounding names. Do you guys know one of those strange sounding names? No? no? Yeah? Indigo. Indigo. That's kind of a weird name, isn't it? So some of my crayons are brand new, and some of them are old and been around for quite a while. And some of the wrappers, you see how some of the wrappers, some of the wrappers are coming off. But um, some of the wrappers are fresh and clean, and some are torn and dirty, right? But guess what? We can learn a lot from this box of crowns, right? Because they're so different. Even though they have lots of differences, they fit nicely together in my little box here, don't they? Because they're all together. They fit nicely in my box. It's OK. And that is a good picture of the way our church should be, right? that people make up the church come in all sizes and colors and some may have strange sounding names and some are old and some are young and some are dressed very nice and some are dressed in a little soiled and worn but everybody is different, right? And we all make up the church. And so our story today, James, the brother of Jesus, wrote in the Bible that his followers of Jesus should not show favoritism. He said, my friends, if you have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, you won't treat some people better than others. Is that a good lesson? Yeah. So suppose a rich person wearing fancy clothes and a gold ring comes to one of, one of our meetings. And suppose a pers poor person dressed in worn out clothes also comes. You must not give the best seat to the one in fancy clothes and tell the one who is poor to stand and sit on the floor. We shouldn't do that, right? That is the same saying that some people are better than others. And if you treat some people better than others, you have done wrong. And the scriptures teach us that we have sinned. So it's important to treat everybody fairly, right? Yes. So that's what favoritism means. So we don't show favoritism and treat everybody fairly. So we must not be careful not to show favoritism in our church because we are all whose children? God. God's children. We are all God's children. Whether we're rich or poor or red or brown or yellow, black or white, just like our crowns because they're all different, right? And we can all be part of something all in one box, just like the crowns, right? And we are all one together, like, just like in church, right? So it is the... Um, and James said, you will do all right if you obey the most important law in scriptures. It is the law that commands us to love others as we love ourselves. So you want to pray? Okay. Father, help us to love one another as you have loved us, regardless of the color of our skin or whether we are rich or poor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job today. Uh-oh. We might need to get some more. There should be enough for everybody to have a sucker. Good job. Oh, you're sharing, Remy? Good job. Because sharing is good, isn't it? <laughs> good job, Remy. <laughs> We have some very special, special music. Charlie and Tammy are going to sing and play for us.
we're going to sing a little song that's called Come and Dine. And if you can't come physically, uh, come with us spiritually. Just, uh, Jesus has the table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people, come and dine. With his manna he doth feed, he supplies our every need. Oh, so sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. They have fed the multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry call and now come and dine. The disciples came to land, thus obeying Christ's command. For the master called to them, oh, come and dine. There they found their hearts desire, bread and fish upon the fire. Thus he satisfies the hungry every time. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. They who fed the multitude turn the water into wine. To the hungry calleth, now come and dine. Soon the Lamb will take his bride to be ever at his side. How the souls of heaven will be assembled be. Oh, it will be a glorious sight, all the saints in spotless white, and with Jesus they will feast eternally. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry calleth, now come and dine. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. They have fed the multitude, turn their water into wine. To the hungry call it now, come and die. Well, you can see where Tammy gets her musical talent. There's a joy every time you see Charlie play. Uh, he comes and plays for Good Samaritan. Do you, do you play for Good Samaritan every week? Yeah, and he especially does it when we have charge of the service at Good Samaritan. If you come early, you will get to sing a lot of the old standards, a lot of the old gospel songs. He and Tammy share their music with us on those days. Now, this is a time when we share with each other the ways that we've seen God's blessing in our lives. How have you seen God's blessing? How have you experienced a blessing? We are blessed to have Dorothy Thomas back with us today. Yay. Yes, Dorothy, thank you. Roger. Yeah, Janice kind of beat me to the punch this morning, but... Uh, uh, for 57 years of marriage, we've been here in this church 54 and three-quarter years. Oh, wow. All right. So you started your marriage off well. <laughs> other joys, other ways you've seen God's blessing. What are you thankful for? Just holler it out. What are you thankful for? Children and our ministers. Okay, thank you. Volunteers. Volunteers, we have lots of those. The fire department. Yes, Deb. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you to Elizabeth and to our wonderful band kids. The police. Our police take care of us and make sure we're safe. Are there others? Let's join together now in our next hymn. Morning is broken.
God's love and grace is fresh every morning. What a wonderful way to wake up and to remember God's blessings. Another way that we remember and show our gratitude for God's blessing is through our offering as we give thanks in a monetary way, and that's a really important way. Would the ushers come forward? Gracious God, you blessed us with the giving of a new day, with loved ones and health and good food and all the many ways that we live and enjoy living. Help us to share a small portion now that your other children may find joy in living wherever they are. In your name we pray. Amen. Be seated. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Genesis. That'll be easy to find if you'd like to follow along. It's right up in the front of the book. Chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, and then down to verse 31. This is a portion of the creation story, a very important part. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the field, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God saw everything that he had made, and it indeed was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day.
Every Monday and Thursday morning, I walk out or I drive out and get ready to come to work and back my car out of the garage, and I see garbage cans all over the neighborhood. Who doesn't have a garbage can? Who doesn't make garbage, dispose things that we have to dispose of? I think sometimes we make a lot of garbage in the United States. In fact, we live in a disposable society. So many things around us are made to be thrown away. They have a span of life that they're expected. Gone is the day when you'd have a washing machine for 20 years. <laughs> or a car your whole life. Our lives seem to be so much easier because we're able to use something once or twice and then dispose of it. For the most part, we've found that's how we like it. We found that it's efficient, it's economical, and in a way, it seems to make sense. But it comes with a pri high price tag. As a nation, we have tried to make attempts at recycling our waste, to use things more than once, to reuse them, to recycle. We've tried that in hopes that we won't end up drowning in our own refuse. But you know, there's another peril facing us in a throwaway society one that's more subtle than physical pollution, but is also much, has much more serious consequences. These days, people are becoming disposable. The thing that's saddest to see is that we're raising a generation of people who feel disposable, who feel that they are of little or no value. People are feeling more isolated and lonely than ever before, in the midst of a crowd even. More and more people experience depression and a sense of worthlessness. Our children and even our adults are being bullied in the school ground, online. We don't care for our health. We eat too much of the wrong foods. We drink too much liquor, some of us. We smoke too many cigarettes. We neglect our most basic health needs. And the worst thing is, when we start feeling disposable, we start treating other people as though they were disposable too. We cannot stop this on our own because disposable people beget disposable people. We need someone to tell us and to show us that we are not expendable, that we are not disposable. We need someone to let us know that our existence has meaning and worth. And that one who said it first, of course, first and best is our God. In the passage that we read just a few moments ago, we get the distinct impression that the creation of human beings was a cause for celebration. It was a good thing. It's absolutely amazing that the creator of the universe created us in his own image. The very fact that God was placed something of himself, of his own essence within us, tells us something very important about us, that we are are creatures of immense, incalculable value and worth. Hear what the psalmist says in Psalms 8. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him, you made him a little lower than God, made us a little lower than God, and crowned us with glory and honor. 
being made in the image of God, distinguishes us from animals and rocks and trees. It distinguishes us even from the angels, from heavenly creatures. There's nothing else in creation quite like us. There's nothing else in creation that contains or reflects the image of God the Creator. In the Ten Commandments, God told Israel, His children, His people, that they must never make idols or images to represent Yahweh. For there is only one way in which God could be imaged in any way in this world. And that is through our humanness. We are the only part of creation that points directly to God. The part of creation that speaks most clearly about the inner nature of God. God's chosen us or has chosen to be imaged in our world through us. This is a staggering thing to comprehend. Can you imagine that there's a little bit of God in you and me? This means that we are not disposable people. Emphatically, we are not disposable. But even more than being created in God's image, we are created to be in fellowship with God. All of creation gives God great joy. And God takes care of His creation. And yet we are the only creatures that God talks to, heart to heart, mind to mind. In our relationship with God, there's dialogue, companionship, and affection. But even more than this, God has created us to be in community with each other. God's best creation is meant to be together. You and I cannot fully reflect God's image by ourselves in isolation. To be in God's image means to be in community, in fellowship with God and with each other. We aren't made to go it alone. We were created to live and work and to be together. And that means that no one is disposable. No one in the community can be allowed to be thrown away. To best see how we should be living in community. How we should be living so as to promote human value and worth. We look to Jesus who is the perfect image of God. Jesus valued all persons perfectly. He touched the throwaway people, the leper, the blind, the lame, the sinner, the traitor, the scorned, the hungry. And he drew them into the community of his followers. And they followed him and learned from him. Jesus recognized that everyone was made in the image of God and that no one was disposable. As image bearers of God, and as followers of Jesus, we concern ourselves with the very persons whom the rest of the world has counted disposable. The world says there's some people we don't need, so let's forget them. In fact, let's get rid of them. And yet if all of humanity is created in God's image. If we are created to be in fellowship and with each other, then why do we still persist in acting as though it were not true? I think it's because, like Adam and Eve, we are free to choose. 
And also just like them, we choose to break our relationships with God and with each other. And in the end, we treat each other and even God as disposable. But the garbage can does not have the last word. We are not the first ones to recycle. Long before we started to put old, worn-out things back into use, God was in the recycling business. God recycles people by forgiving us for throwing ourselves away. And for throwing each other away. God gives us another chance. A new lease on life. God seeks us out. And just like we sort out the, the garbage to be recycled. God sorts us out from the garbage. In spite of our rejection of God's love. God loves us more than ever. As the apple of God's eye. God's love sent Jesus down into the world to find us, to die for us, and to restore within us that image that God originally placed in us, that true image of God. Through Jesus, we are restored to our full, true humanity. And the image of God within us, each of us, is reclaimed. As that image is reclaimed in us, we are also given the assignment of sorting through the trash for other people whom life has tossed away. It is our job as recycled disposables to seek out others whom life and society has given up and thrown out, along with yesterday's soggy cocoa puffs and half-eaten bagels. As the redeemed people of God, we have the responsibility to seek out the lost and the forgotten and the torn apart and the thrown away people in our community. We have the responsibility to tell them that they are not throwaway people. It's our responsibility to tell them through Christ that we are all members of God's family. To remind them and ourselves of what it says in 1 John 3, 1, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called, not garbage, but children of God. And that is what we are. I think the one of the ways that God reminds us that we are so valuable is through the receiving of the holy meal, holy communion. As we're reminded that Christ gave his life for us so that we might have new life and we might serve him. I'd like to invite my... Communion assistants, come up and join me. I want to remind you that in the United Methodist Church, we practice what we call open communion, which means that you don't have to be a Methodist. You don't have to be a member of any particular denomination to be invited to this table because it is God's free gift, the way, the, one of the most important ways that God's grace gets into our lives. When the time comes, uh, the ushers will release you to come down the center aisle. 
uh, you'll have two options of how to receive communion. Uh, I'll offer you a piece of bread from the common loaf. You can either dip the bread in the common cup or take one of the little cups that will be on the tray. Uh, you can choose which side you go to, and then you can uh, sit in one of the front pews if you'd like to take a few moments of meditation and return to your seat by the side aisles. If you or someone near you is not able to come to the table, please let one of the ushers know and they'll tell me so that we can bring communion to you so that all may receive. Now all is ready. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. also want to remind you that if, if you have a gluten allergy, we also have little crackers that you can, uh, can eat. All is prepared. Now come. <laughs>
Would you stand and let's join together in our closing hymn. Please join me in the benediction. Lord, we leave here to enter.